what is up? You know, it's a uh, daunting task, um, you know, getting better at jujitsu, learning how to progress, going from one rank to the other. Um, here I'm going to tell you about what I think is the number one killer of um, increasing your ability in jujitsu. Guys, my name is Bill Jones. I am the head instructor of top level martial arts. I am a black belt under Master Pedro Sauer, and uh, this is Professor's Corner. Sorry I'm coming to you from the car again. It's probably all bouncy and crazy, but you know what? I haven't posted a video in a couple weeks. I've been crazy working on a kickboxing program for the academy, and uh, quite frankly, it just needs to get done. You guys deserve to be heard, and I don't want you to feel like I'm ignoring you. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you've got your own ideas on what kills people's progress, also let me know that. I love listening to your comments and reading your listening to them. reading your comments. If you haven't noticed, I do read every one, um, and I'll do that for as long as time allows me to. But um, definitely hit that subscribe button and the uh, thumbs up button. It helps a lot. Um, it lets other people see the content if you like what you're seeing. Um, all right, so the number one killer, uh, it's this simple, complacency. And the place I see this happen the most, the complacency, is high blue belt, but mostly low to mid purple belt. Purple belt is a level, it's a strange level of, in jiu-jitsu. It's a level where like you can kick most people's butts, right? Like as a purple belt, you are a legitimately dangerous human being. If an average dude gets in a fight with you, their chances are very, very low of even being able to do anything. Newcomers feel like babies to you, and even like new blue belts feel like babies to you. So, like that's a that's a tough place to be because I think a lot of us go into jujitsu um, with the idea of man, I just want to get good. I just want to get decent at this, man. Like like when you started, like you're so lost that the idea of just being able to beat people consistently is so far off to you that that's a great goal to have. And, and I think that uh, initially that's fine. But over time, guys, you're going to be able to do that pretty consistently and on a regular basis. The second part of this is that as you get to purple belt, like everybody's a blue belt and everybody's a white belt. So like when you're white belt and blue belt, like everybody around you is kind of even with you or, or close you know, like your buddies are with you or, and you, you tend to get this core group that, uh, you know, you, you trust and, and that you train with and, you know, they kind of drop off at, at, at blue belt um, and you make it to purple belt, like some something ridiculous, like 43% of all people training jujitsu right now are blue belts. It's like nearly half and the rest, like, like it's another like 30 some percent that are white belts. So you're in a very low percentage of, of the number of practitioners already. So you can already beat all like over half of the people that you train with and definitely over the half of the people that are out there and that makes it really tough when your goal was just to be able to beat people right like man I just don't want to be getting my ass kicked and all of a sudden you feel like well, I'm not getting my butt kicked anymore I'm able to handle just about anybody who walks in the school you know save for maybe these brown belts and black belts and there's only so many of them right so how do you deal with that? You become complacent. You, you're, you're like, yeah, this is this is good enough, right? Like, or even even more, like you've got this series of moves that just crush everybody, and maybe even give the brown belts and black belts a hard time, right? You see that all the time. If you watch the tournament scene, you see like these guys who come up through the the, the ranks. They come up through the uh, you know blue belt and purple belt and brown belt levels in tournaments, and they're they're like one trick ponies, right? They're all like the most common one is like triangle like everybody's a triangle master at at uh you know at, at like blue and purple and brown belt like everybody's got a good triangle and uh you, you know but then all of a sudden you get to the black belt division and none of that's working anymore um that's because these people become complacent they be, they say well this is good enough this is what i need and then when you meet up with people who've been black belts for as long as you you, you longer than you've been training They've seen this stuff before, so it's not that big a deal. Um, they know how to deal with it, and those guys, a lot of times, have trouble handling it, and they have trouble growing. And they're like, oh, well, the competition up there is so high. And yeah, I agree, it's very high. It's very, very high level. But it's not just because they're so good, it's also because you're complacent. You were so used to using one move, or one series of moves, that you're very predictable. 
And while you may be really, really good at it, in jiu-jitsu, that's really tough. Um, you know, because, you know, like they say that uh, high-level high level people have like a small set of moves that they work. And that's true. But, uh, it, you know, at some point, you're going to have to expand that a little bit. Um, and so purple belts become complacent. They, they, they kind of just worry about themselves. And I even wrote a blog a while back called Purple Belt-itis. And I should say, this is only at like low level purple belt because there hits a point where that complacency, you either quit or the complacency has to go away for you to get better because what'll happen is, you know, yeah, you were given your, maybe, you know, black belts and brown belts a hard time with this move set you've got. Maybe it's a triangle. I'm just using that as an example. And then everybody's like, oh, hey, be careful. So-and-so uh, has, a, has a really great, great triangle set up. Don't get in his triangles. And then all of a sudden you're getting like zero triangles anymore on any of these guys. And eventually you're like, okay, I need to move on. Or you can't handle it and you quit. I would say that most people who make it to Purple Belt, they don't quit that easily. So that that's the good thing is like you go through this lull where you're like, man, I'm just, I'm bored of regular classes. I feel like I've seen it all. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I can tap most of the people and you become complacent. And so you hit this huge plateau. And again, typically this is in Purple Belt. It kind of depends on your own learning curve though. It could be at Blue Belt, it could be High Blue Belt. It might even not be until Brown Belt. It might never happen to you depending on how good you are. I know guys who, who uh, don't believe in complacency and like keep meticulous notes and everything just to make sure that kind of stuff never happens. Like they'll literally go to their notebook and say, okay, well, I, I've hit, uh, you know, 600 triangles in the last two months. Uh, I feel good with that. The next thing I'm going to work on is whatever, you, you know, arm bars, tr cross jokes, doesn't matter. They're like, that's the next thing they're going to hit. And uh, then they never become complacent because they always have something they're working toward. So no matter what it is that you're doing with your jujitsu, don't allow complacency to sink in. That's going to be the number one killer of your ability to grow. And how do you, how do you fix that? How do you, how do you change that? Simple. Keep notes. Never go into to training without a goal. Goal number one, learn whatever your coaches are teaching you. Goal number two, try whatever your coaches are teaching you. Goal number three, when you roll, have a specific goal that you're working on every time. It doesn't necessarily have to be what your coaches are showing you that day, but I highly recommend you consult with them to see where they think you need to go next. You know, if you're just kind of meandering aimlessly or finding your own things, that's not always bad, but you might be heading down a road that, that doesn't lead where you think it does. And uh, your coaches have probably been there and they're usually able to say, yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're trying there, um, but it's gonna kind of end in this, this roadblock here. I recommend you maybe do it this way and then they can kind of you know give you a shortcut so you don't have to go through all the bad habits and and make the mistakes that they made all right guys that's all i've got for you today thank you so much for watching i will talk to you later